Welcome to this video where I wanted to have a look at the differences between a nova and a supernova. Now it might be fairly obvious from the name that a supernova is generally going to be more energetic than a nova, but do they have the same origin? Right? Do they come from the same sort of process or are they completely different? Well before we do that, let's have a look at general supernovas in general. Like where do they come from? What are they? Well the two most common types really I suppose are ones that you may have come across before are type 1a and type 2. Now the type 1a that typically occurs in a binary system with a white dwarf and a red giant. Type 2s are generally kind of core collapse stars when they reach the end of their life. So they're two different things and we see different things as a result of that so they are distinctly different. Now type 1a generally thermonuclear so you've got a white dwarf that's pulling material off a larger red giant star so you have this disc around it and what happens is it will get to a certain mass and then the entire star will reach the ignition temperature of carbon as you can see it will then explode it will always be the same energy um, so it should be the same brightness so they're quite useful for measuring distances in the universe so the white dwarf will reach about 1.4 solar masses it heats up as it's doing so because it gets more massive so the gravitational forces are uh, trying to collapse that which heats the star up it then hits that temperature where the carbon then ignites essentially and the whole thing is destroyed so when a type 1a supernova occurs the white dwarf star generally doesn't survive because the entire star basically explodes the companion star though the red giant that it was orbiting and pulling the material off generally does survive what will happen is it likely will lose some of its outer layers from that supernova and it will receive a velocity kick so it's essentially thrown with some velocity away from the explosion so it does survive but the white dwarf does not now the type 2 so this is going to be from the death of a massive star so these are stars much more massive than our sun and what happens here is they reach the end of fusion in their core they're no longer generating any outward pressure to balance against the gravitational force trying to collapse it and it collapses the core what happens is the density in that core kind of overshoots the neutron degeneracy pressure you get a rebound which then propagates out through the outer layers and that is what or originates the type 2 supernova basically that's what causes this this shock wave that propagates outwards and they have different mechanisms really because this is a core collapse whereas the type 1a is when it's more thermonuclear so there are different processes that cause the supernova but they're both very very energetic have very high energies now the type 2 will leave behind a dense stellar remnant so here you've got a pulsar and you can see the jet coming out on the left hand side and you could also get a neutron star or black hole it all depends on how massive the star was when it came to the end of its life more massive stars will leave a black hole ones that are less massive than that will you will have a neutron star or a pulsar and these supernovas can actually outshine entire galaxies so galaxies are collections of billions and billions of other stars and to have a single star that's gone supernova to then outshine all of those other stars together and that just highlights just how high energy these are these events are and the one you've got circled there is a, a supernova that occurred in a distant galaxy that was picked up and you can see how bright that is in comparison to the rest of the galaxy now here's an example of a type 1a that was caught i think by hubble and you can see it kind of dimming down after it occurred and again you can see just how bright that is in comparison to all of the other stars in the field there really now nova usually occur in binary systems and actually this might look familiar in the sense of a type 1a supernova it's the same sort of system so you've got a white dwarf star in a binary system with a larger star maybe a red giant mirror maybe a solar mass star and um, what's happen happening here is it's pulling material off again you then have that disc orbiting the white dwarf and the white dwarf star is growing in mass in exactly the same way that a type 1a supernova might occur but what's the difference well the difference with a nova is that as it's pulling that material off which is likely going to be hydrogen because the outer layers of stars are predominantly hydrogen then that hydrogen we have a thin layer of that on the white dwarf star and that kind of undergoes periodic hydrogen fusion you get a sudden flash of hydrogen fusion which then causes the nova that white dwarf star is still below that critical mass though 
before it has a type one a so what you would typically see is that would uh, you'd have those occurring multiple times before you ended up with a type one a so here you've got an example of a nova to a smaller version really from a white dwarf so this potentially could be a type 1a at some point in the future future but it is at the moment just a nova and again they are very energetic they're very bright they're just not on the same level as what a supernova might be so if you've got those occurring you've got a nova and it might be re reoccurring so this happens multiple times not just once and whilst that's occurring the white dwarf star is getting more massive and more massive and once it reaches a critical mass, which is the 1.4 solar masses, you're likely going to get a type 1a supernova. So a recurrent nova likely would lead to a type 1a. So you would get those novas occurring beforehand, before it reached that critical level. And that critical level is known as the Chandra Sekra limit. And it's generally around about 1.4 solar masses. And that's when you have that type 1a occur because it gets to the temperature when the whole star basically um, ignites I suppose really. So thank you for watching and if you enjoy then you can check out some of the other videos.